I'm currently in the process of transforming this very old two-car garage into a full-fledged workshop for all the different projects I've got going on. So far, I've reduced the likelihood of the place spontaneously burning to the ground from 86% all the way down to only 12%. Well, it's not on fire. And I tore down the claustrophobia-inducing wall in the middle of the building to maximize the amount of usable floor space. There's lights, it's open, it's way better than how it was, but it's still not quite where I want it. Here in Houston, it can get pretty warm. Right now, it isn't that hot outside, but it is gonna get there. So the plan is to apply some closed cell spray foam insulation to the underside of the roof before the summer heat really kicks in. But spray foam insulation is always done as the very last step after framing is finished. And based on what I showed at the end of last video, you should know there's still more to do. I might have maximized floor space, but I haven't maximized vertical space. Getting rid of the old fluorescent lights here gives us an extra three inches, and you can do a lot with three inches, trust me. But even so, these two rafter ties are still directly overhead both garage bays. And that means I'm not gonna be able to utilize a car lift in this space. Unless I were to, I don't know, get rid of them? But like I mentioned last episode, rafter ties are what hold the roof up. If they weren't there anymore, no, 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 please don't do it. I have a family, I have a family, please don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. The walls would spread apart, and in turn, the ridge of the roof would sag down. But another way to support the roof is to support the roof. But of course, having a bunch of two by fours just right in the middle of the building is, well, stupid. So what I'm gonna do is install a very stiff structural beam at the top held up by posts on either end. That way the roof gets full support across the entire span and I get my open space. It's honestly not too difficult to calculate what size beam is needed for a conversion like this. However, when it comes to the literal roof over my head, I don't want to take any chances. So I hired a professional structural engineer and he spec'd me out this one and three quarter inch thick LVL beam that's 18 inches deep. If you didn't know, LVL stands for laminated veneer lumber, so yes, it's literally just plywood, but a very specific type that's engineered for maximum strength. And with that, maximum price. The ridge beam here, plus these two others I bought for another project, sent me back $1,200. That's more than I paid for the Fiero, the Interceptor, and the GPZ combined. These things are pricey. Hello? Yeah, I have a Patreon. Why? Now the beam's actual thickness is a little closer to two inches, so to get it to fit between the rafters that are only an inch and a half apart, they're gonna have to be notched. And to make that process easier, I designed and 3D printed this little template that allows me to mark out exactly how far I need to trim. And that's easy enough to do with a model here on the ground, but the actual things are 13 feet up in the air. But luckily for me, my ladder just gave me permission to go on the top step, so I should be able to knock these out without too much hassle. Time to do that 11 more times. So to figure out where exactly to place the 4x4 posts that are going to hold up the beam, I whipped out my auto laser level to find and mark the center line, then measured out from there to mark the outer edges. And since I just removed what the outer sheathing was nailed to, I slapped some heavy duty construction adhesive onto the 4x4 to do at least something to hold the boards in place. The other side is more of the same, but this time with the added challenge of doing everything in the dark. You know, it feels very wrong to drill a big hole into the post that's gonna be supporting the entire beam going across the ridge, but uh, apparently it's perfectly fine to do. And plus, my engineer actually only specified two 2x4s here, so the 4x4 is actually overkill. Still feels weird though. 
Oh, that was way overexposed with the lights back on. But in order to raise the beam up, I gotta tear down the rafter ties first. But before that, I gotta build a temporary wall to hold the roof up in the interim. Ideally, the wall would be as close to the ridge as possible so both halves of the roof can be evenly supported, but it also needs to be far enough away on one side so that there's room to actually maneuver the beam into place. And just to be safe with this wall, I went ahead and secured the bottom place to the slab with some concrete anchor screws. Though they do work best when they're not broken in half. Oh, that broke it. Gotta be fuck. Yep, it's still heavier without the springs. Now, I could go ahead and remove all of the rafter ties now, but to mitigate the amount of time that the roof is gonna be left unsupported fully, it's probably in my best interest to wait until tomorrow to do so when I actually have a material lift to raise this beam up. I know I get mistaken for him a lot, but I am actually not world's strongest man, Hafthor Bjornsson, so in order to raise this beam even the slightest bit, I gotta use something like this material lift. This thing makes 300 pounds feel like a feather. A 26 foot long feather, but the plan is to raise the beam at an angle. And once it's higher than the wall's top plates, I can rotate it into position and then lift it the rest of the way up. But if the beam is too long, there's no way it can be rotated into position. I know the garage is 26 feet long on paper, but I actually don't know the exact measurement, so I got this laser measurer. The garage turned out to be 25 feet, 11 inches, and 9 sixteenths of an inch. So what I'll do is cut the beam right at 25 feet and 11 inches. That way there will be a hair more than a quarter inch of clearance on either end, which should leave plenty of wiggle room to get this thing into place. I do need to make it so that the beam is upright as it's being lifted though. So... And I'm sure it feels weird seeing me remove the raptor tie that I added just last episode, but keep in mind, that was filmed over 10 months ago, so this thing has been putting in some work. But hey, if you hadn't noticed, I'm in fact not resembling a pancake right now, so that means the temporary wall is doing its job. Time to do mine. was going so well. I did not foresee the top of the lift running into the roof before it gets all the way up. Huh. You know, I should have foreseen this. I realized that the fork on the lift can be flipped upside down so that the prongs are moved to the top of the mounting bracket which should hopefully give plenty of clearance to get this thing the rest of the way up. So now I can go ahead and start securing it in place with hurricane ties. Not only do hurricane ties create a super strong connection capable of withstanding large forces from something like... Um, I don't know, I can't think of an example right now, but they're kind of also the only way I can fasten these things together since this retrofit has the beam sitting below the existing 2x4 ridge board. 
Unfortunately, there is about an inch gap between the beam and the ridge on the ends, which means that the roof did end up sagging just ever so slightly. But that's nothing that a jack can't fix. Then it's just more measuring, cutting, adhesiving, banking into placing, and nailing. Same story for the other side. But here, the beam was tilted ever so slightly at the end, causing the post to also be angled slightly, so I just pulled the two things level with the ratchet strap. And don't worry, that's not a permanent solution. Though I wouldn't put it past me. But hey, I should probably mention something if it wasn't yet clear. This beam is quite thin, and as it is now, not actually capable of supporting the roof. <gasps> well, hold on. See, beams are only strong in one orientation, perfectly vertical. And the concern is that something as long, thin, and tall as this will be extremely prone to twisting outside of that optimal orientation, meaning the roof might sag or worse, collapse. And that's exactly why pretty much every LVL manufacturer has something in their documentation that says that beams of this depth need to be doubled up and nailed together. And that's so that the two separate beams will effectively be operating as one beam that's really thick and therefore less likely to twist. Now my structural engineer that I hired is very aware of all that, however he gave me the okay to use this single beam as long as I brace it every eight feet with collar ties. I can do that. Now one reason you might go with the double beam option would be for absolute maximum ceiling height. Since there would be two beams supporting the roof instead of just one, I would have actually only had to use 14 inch LVLs, giving me four extra inches. But I would have not only had to deal with installing an additional beam, but it also would have cost me almost $300 more to buy the two smaller ones instead of the single larger one. Obviously, both options have their trade-offs. I just picked the one that made the most sense for me. Oh my god, the lift was due back two hours ago. This thing is f***ing massive. So with these collar ties in place now and holding the beam steady, I can go ahead and remove this ratchet strap. Then the very last thing before the temporary wall comes down is fortifying the connections between the beam and the posts. I had to rip down some plywood spacers to get a flush surface for the connecting plates, which means that the inch and a half structural screws are going to be a little too short to fit through both the plywood and the beam, but some two and a half inch ones should do the trick. I also added some blocking on the gable end here. Of course I wasn't wearing the microphone, didn't have it plugged in. So that I could add in another collar tie, which looking back I don't think was actually necessary here. But hey, the more the merrier. And after doing the same thing on the other side, the beam is finally ready to carry the load of the roof on its own. So that means it's time to tear down this wall. There's so much more space. When it came time to install the rest of the Hurricane tires in the remaining rafters, I very quickly got tired of screwing them in, and also I dropped the entire box of screws and could not be bothered to pick them up, so I went out and got a pneumatic palm nailer, and this thing is incredible. I finished the remaining 20 brackets in about 25 minutes, and it took that same amount of time just to install the previous four, and with the last one in, I thought I would be more excited to see everything done, but the more I looked at this, the more I hated the idea of doing just the bare minimum to brace the beam. So that is exactly why I went out and got enough 2x6s to put a collar tie on every rafter. But then I realized that I would have to not only notch both corners of every single one of these, but also find some way to raise and hold them level without the material lift which just seemed like so much work, so I did what any person would do in this situation, and that was of course to 3D model and texture my entire backyard including the entirety of the garage framing and code my own video game where I could do all the work virtually to get that same sweet vicarious satisfaction as if I was actually doing this in real life. We're playing Fingerprints Workshop Simulator 2023. 
Gotta say the graphics are definitely a lot better than a 2022 version. Ooh, look at this place. It's a little dark. It's uh, ooh, nice. That's a lot better. I wanted to get the work done, but I didn't want to do the work, so I figured this was a perfect middle ground. I still feel like I'm accomplishing something, and you still get to see the process. And might I add just how easy this process is. Clicking and dragging is far superior than whatever manual labor would have been required to actually get these up. Alright, this is the last one. <laughs> what just happened? Um, does the light switch work? Nope. Does not work. Mm. Flashlight. We got a flashlight. Very cool. Um, uh, honestly, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing. This beam is not going anywhere. And with everything said and done, I now have over 11 feet of vertical space, which is more than I had at my previous shop. This ridge beam conversion really just takes this space to the next level for what I can do in here. And I think the only thing that could take it even further would be if I could actually get a car in here. I removed the garage door tracks and what they were attached to. I literally cannot open either of these doors.